Welcome to my show. I'm Barry Louise Switson. I don't know about you, but I've heard about these people who talk to animals and animals talk to them. Well, our guest is one who communicates with animals as well as humans by mental telepathy. And the amazing thing is she's right on. And I would like to introduce Roseanne Aratoum. Roseanne, thank you so much for joining me today. That's a pleasure. Now, do you get kidded about this or ribbed about the fact that you really communicate with animals in the spiritual world as well as in the physical world? Amazingly little. Really? Uh, the only time I really got kidded was when my brother's best friend, who is, uh, I think he's in his 30s now, I told him and he burst out laughing. And I said, yes, it's hilarious that people pay me for talking to their animals. And people are amazingly open to it. Now, do you find that it's more women or more men? Um, actually, a mixture these days. Uh -huh. um, men, I find, are becoming more open to this kind of stuff. More out, uh, sometimes, I won't say out of necessity, but because it's, there's so much out there. How did you get started doing this? Did it just one day happen that you started to look at this cat and the cat started talking to you? or? Because well, I know you have a lot of cats. Yes. Uh, I actually have been doing it since I was a, ki since I was a kid. Uh -huh. I was raised in rural England on a, on a farm, actually a couple of farms. And I, at that point, I liked animals more than I liked people growing up. Because <laughs> I didn't get on very well with people then as I do now. And I would just go out and talk to the animals. And they would answer you back? Yeah, they would talk back. And it was uh, as though I'm having a conversation with you. You know, just the same thing. Did, did you feel awkward? You felt strange? How did you feel? No, no. To me, it's something that's normal. Uh, every human being has the ability. It's just growing up, either we're told that animals are stupid, or else we're told it's our imagination, or whatever belief the parent has. In all, you know, in all good conscience, they're trying to guide us well. Right. But, you know, that's what they know, so that's what they teach us. And I didn't have any of that growing up. Because so I kept my mouth shut. Oh, you never said anything <laughs> I never to anybody. Said anything to oh, anyone. okay. No wonder. Yes. That's why. And you just yes. went along, Mary Lily, along the way and just kept enhancing your capabilities. Yes. Uh, actually, for a few years, I forgot about it. And then I was working with an animal communicator quite a few years ago who is excellent. And then all of a sudden, it, all this stuff came back. Well, it didn't come back. It came out again. And I went, oh, wow, I can do this. And it just improved from there on. It's like a muscle. The more you use it, the better it gets. Because I know I, one time I was really upset with my father, who's deceased. And I was having a conversation with him in my apartment. Uh -huh. And I was going back and forth. And it was like he was communicating with me. Not that I was really hearing anything, but there was noise and there was chatter. And I looked over yes. to my windowsill. And there's this pigeon that's going back and forth on my windowsill. Now, you can understand, I live in a high rise uh -huh. here in Manhattan. And I stopped chattering, and the bird kept chattering away and was just going back and forth. And then all of a sudden, it finished, and it flew off. And I felt like, OK, is this real? Did this really happen? And what was the gist of this whole thing? And it was like, keep your spirits up. Absolutely. Pigeons are amazing. They, they have a bad rap. Oh, they have a bad they, they, they rap. Well, they deserve a bad rap on occasion. Well, yeah. You know, well. You know, animals, each animal does what it does. It has its own job, mm -hmm. you know. Now, we had been talking in another conversation about animals surrounding us. Mm -hmm. Now, is this just certain people, or everybody has animals that surround us? Is it a, animals from the jungle? Is it what kind? I mean, how does this happen, and do people know it? Yeah. Uh, well, it's the same thing again. Uh, most people or most of us, because especially in Western societies, we're so left brain oriented, the physical world, business, whatever, that we forget about all these things that are actually, they're actually quite normal. And everybody, they're, they're spirit animals, uh -huh. which are different from animals that have been in a physical body and have left. These are animals that everyone has at least a couple these animals can either be with us for life or else they're there for a particular reason. Um, sometimes there are particular animals that have particular jobs, like a dove 
means somebody uh, is a peacemaker. Usually the doves are on the head. I have yet to see them anywhere else. Ah. Which means they're good mediators. They're good at seeing both sides of an argument. And what I found was what the doves told me is that if the dove has an olive branch in its mouth, the person is uh, a fully fledged peacemaker. If they don't have an olive branch, they're an apprentice, they're learning to be one. Oh, for heaven's sake. Which is, fascinates me. I mean, I, this is what they tell me. But the quite okay, but how does the person know what animal is surrounding them? Do they serve a, um, a purpose? Yes, the spirit animals are with us to help us either, as I said, in our, in our life, or else for a specific purpose. Uh, like one woman who I did, um, I introduced her to her spirit animals. One was a um, praying mantis. You know how carefully they walk I've and they look where they're walking. Walk. Okay. Their, or their movements are very precise. Uh -huh. And this woman had um, slight nerve damage from a disease and she had, she had trouble walking. So the praying mantis was helping her to walk. Oh, interesting. And, you know, she needed to, something she need, most of us take for granted, she needed to think about because right. her balance was a little off. But I, so things like that. But did she know she had the praying mantis as her, would you say these are guardian angels? Um, of a sort or? Mm, they're, they're kind of different. Guardian angels, from what I know, um, I haven't talked to too many of them, protect us from danger. Spirit animals help us do a specific thing. Say if somebody is going through a particular phase in their life where they need assistance, say, you know, emotionally, if they're having an emotional trauma, that spirit animal will help them with that particular thing and whatever they need at that moment. Or say if somebody is a little shy, I, I've had one, um, actually there was a wonderful couple who I met. They were both healers. And the gentleman, and they do, their healing involves passive work and also involves active, which is um, they use sound as well as healing with their hands. This gentleman had a shape-shifting bear. A shape-shifting? A shape-shifting <laughs> bear. It shifted from different types of bear, from the s small black bear to the big grizzly, because that's what, and this bear assisted him in his work, because this man did the different kinds of healing work. And so that's what this I'm bear so was assisting confused. with. Well, he was, he was doing, <coughs> um, you know, sometimes he'd use sound, which is more of uh, an active way to do healing work. It's actually doing something. And other times, they would just do a laying on of hands, which is a little more passive. But when, OK, but where was the bear? I mean, like, when he's doing healing with the hands, where is the bear? The bear was actually behind him. Guiding him? Yes, just, just assisting, assisting him, him in doing his work. But I don't understand how the bear is guiding him. I, I, was mental telepathy saying, do this, do that, or taking his Most hand? Most people are not aware of it. They, they, spirit animals work on a very subtle level. Okay. And I mean, I, I have spirit animals that I've had for years, and they work, they work on a very, I have a, a cougar on my left and a wolf on my right. All right. They work on a very subtle level. Uh, I mean, I'm not aware of them most of the time. They, they work for my balance, you know, um, more of a spiritual and emotional balance so that, because I do this kind of work and then I do some left brain work too, so it takes a balance to, a, ba a spiritual balance to keep these two together and that's what the animals help me with is, is balancing the two. So they work on such subtle levels that most of the time we're not even aware of them. That's incredible. It's just now when you do re you do readings for people. Mm -hmm. Do you do them over the phone? Do you do them in person? Um, usually, I do them over the phone. Most of the readings I do are with physical animals or animals that have left recently. Mm -hmm. um, if somebody's had an animal that's left more than about a year or so, quite often they're they're back in physical form, and it's a little uh, it's a little hard to kind of contact them because they're, they're back in a different form and they're doing a different job. Ah. Um, now I had asked you about a friend's cat who had uh -huh. left. Uh -huh. and you gave me some information and what you said is the animal did its job here mm -hmm. and did not want to stay around any longer and decided mm -hmm. to leave. Mm -hmm. And they don't, animals, you said, don't attach themselves to yes. humans like humans attach themselves to animals. Yes. 
they have a very different perspective, which to me is, is more normal. We humans have been taught to, that love is, I love you. You know, we, we have to, possessive, yes. And you hold on to it. And to describe what it really is, we have to put an adjective on it, which is unconditional love. Mm -hmm. That's what it truly is. Whereas animals will say, I love you. Uh. And as much as they care about us when their job is finished, animals are like us. They have a purpose before they come here. And they choose us as, as well as us choosing them. I mean, they're sentient beings, thinking, feeling beings like we are. <laughs> and they get what it is about love. And then w my job is finished. Say you, you had a job at a company, like the company employed you to do a specific thing for six months. Okay. You do, you do that job, and then when the six months are up, it's like, oh, okay, my job is finished. Bye-bye. I'll go on to my next job. That's in effect what they do. It's like they work with, with us on different levels. It could be physical, it could be emotional, it could be spiritual, depending on what the animal's expertise is. Each animal has their own expertise as we do. So within, let's say, the cat world, uh -huh. each animal has its own expertise. Yes. Like I can give you an example of a couple of my cats. Ling, who is this incredible evolved being, probably more evolved than most humans, um, he is a, um, the way he explained it to me once was my partner. He knows basically all there is to know about everything, the spiritual world with animals. So if I can't answer a question that I'm asked, I will ask him. Most of the time he knows, and if he doesn't know, he knows who, who to, to ask. ask. This is amazing. So this is a partnership with him. Okay. Um, one of my other cats, um, I haven't worked too much with herbs, but I, I know a little bit about herbology, um, like a minuscule amount. That's her expertise. And that's why she came, because she thought I'd do a little, be doing a little more work with that. And, you know, they, and some cats will work, like one of the other ones, she hasn't um, done too much, because I have done too much with the education side of what I'm doing that's her expertise. She knows about how to help educate people so that they can, they get it. Uh, it's just okay. fascinating. <laughs> it fascinates me. It's fascinating to me to, to listen to all this because I know when we first met you had mentioned to me that um, I've got two birds sitting on my shoulders. Uh -huh. so two little chickadees. Two little chickadees, the yes. male and the female. Yes. And I don't know what they're, pro what they're here for to uh -huh. protect me, to help me, to uh, guide me? Yeah, that, that's for your balance also. Okay, because my some, balance. Because of uh, the way you work, sometimes um, you're very much, when you get very focused on one thing and so your energy goes to that and that could be a very male-oriented job that you're doing at that moment. So these little guys can help you balance back to, to doing male, something female. that's very female. Yeah, it balances the male-female energy for you. Okay, so it's like keeping that whole balance and it's like okay taking this step further mm -hmm. t uh, gaining power or taking yes. back our power yes we always seem to give people our power I know I've been doing this an incredible amount lately yes well it's that's like when we're out of balance that we give our power away okay and and it's not about when when we reclaim it it's not about saying, oh, I gave it to you, so I want it back from you. Right. It's, it's still inside. It's just at that moment we gave away, um, it's, it's a little more specific. It's, it's not actually giving away the power, but it's giving away kind of the ownership to it. We still have it. All right. But we're saying, I'm going to let you have power over me for this moment. Now, I still have my power, though. Do you find women do that more than men? Oh, absolutely. In our Western cultures, and, and most cultures on the planet, mm -hmm. um, for I don't know however many hundreds of years it's been a patriarchal, most societies, there are some matriarchal societies on this planet, have been patriarchal societies, which means the men, um, not so much the men are in power, but the, uh, it, it's, it's a balance of power. And this is very much a female planet. And the pendulum is swinging the other way and a matriarchal society, because this is a female planet, is more balanced. And it's not about, 
women going out and saying, hey, I'm the one that's in power now. <laughs> it's more about balancing the energy and saying, let's talk about this, as opposed to just rushing in to do something. Um, I mean, I, I think all humans are wonderful. I love men. I think they're wonderful. I love women. I think they're wonderful. And it's about balancing the relationship. It's about transformation. Because we're, especially again in the Western societies, we're inclined to go to one extreme or the other. It's like women are either kind of, well, you know, and subservient to their men, or else they go out to business. It's like, I'm going to be a man in business. There is a balance. You can be a woman in business. I've seen them. And, and still be a woman still and still be effective in business. Okay. Now, I have a question on that, but do animals come into play in this whole scenario? Yes. Um, there, there is a, a great connection. I mean, every human being has connection with animals. Right. And again, with our upbringing, I mean, if people are raised in a city, there's less likely to be a connection. Um, I am very, I use the term loosely, fortunate. And that was my choice before I came here, to be raised on a farm. OK, before you came here means before you before I before I could be, body. Yeah. Okay, it, so when I was a spirit before I chose to be a human being, yes. All right. And, um, you know, different people choose different things, and we lose our connection with the, it's a connection with the earth, too. You know, it's all the same thing. It's, it's communication with ourselves, it's communication with the earth, it's communication with another human being, with, with all the beings on the planet. I mean, animals being one of the beings on the planet. You know, you have the plants and the trees and the... Right. And in New York, you have Central Park. Yes. And unfortunately, we're raised to be left brain thinkers to go so we can have a job, so we can raise a family, so analytical. we can get married. Analytical, absolutely. All right. Absolutely, which is the left brain. Then the right brain is the creative and the connection to the spiritual world, the connection, and the connection to the planet, which is, even though it's a physical planet, it's a, spirit, it's a spiritual being as well. You know, well, how does somebody stay balanced? Oh, there are so many ways. It's different okay, for everyone. Um, it's from, different for everyone? It's di yeah, there are certain things that will, will work for one person that won't necessarily work for another. Um, Let me just ask you okay. why you're thinking there. Yes. And I'm interrupting your thought. That's OK. Feng Shui? Is that come into play with this? Because I've been oh, hearing more of yes. Feng Shui. is amazing. Oh, OK, because I didn't know. If I've been seeing a lot more of that. In fact, there's a magazine out about it. So I don't know if there is, a, if everything is interconnected. Oh, yes. Everything, everything on this planet is in interconnected with everything else. And that works outwards to the universe. Feng Shui, I know a very small amount about it, but it works with it works with energy, whereas if you move, um, the example I can give, say if you have, um, which I used to have, a living room and a dining room with a, a window at either end, you open the windows, the energy will just go phew, straight through your apartment. Okay. And a way to help the energy stay stable in your apartment is to put a wind chime. So that, that breaks the energy from just going through your apartment and taking the energy out with it. It works with the placement of objects, and there are certain colors that have certain effects and certain objects placed in a room that have certain effects, um, both spiritually as well as physical energy, okay, which so amazes me. So, OK, so we've got Feng Shui. We've got the right brain, left brain, listening. Mm -hmm. Do you, OK, let me just ask you about listening. Do you hear actual voices, or do you hear, how do they communicate with you? Just that little voice in your head that says, do this or do that, or this is the situation? Do you, and you answer back? Um, it's sometimes I get a voice. It's, it's as though I'm having a conversation with you, except it's in my head. All right. With my cats at home, I mean, I, I have conversations with them. And they keep on saying to me, you don't need to verbally say stuff. And I said, well, it's more comfortable to me. I mean, I could just have a, conversa a silent conversation in my head with them, because that's how they communicate best. Even though they meow and they have different sounds, that's just a physical, you know, because they don't speak verbally, we think they're stupid. Oh, um, I never thought of them as stupid. But well, a lot of people do. 
Oh, all right. Um, and I mean, this this whole planet. I, to me, bottom line to everything is communication. The better we communicate with ourselves, the better we communicate with the world around us. The better we communicate with ourselves, the better we will do our jobs. The better we communicate with ourselves, the better our relationships will be. And it's a communication with our environment, you know, with all the stuff that are... Feng Shui is a form of communication because when you turn things around, the energy is changing. So, I mean, I've, I've had somebody say that, uh, in fact, a gentleman that does it, this was he, in a lecture he gave, he's an architect and he's a, he's a Feng Shui specialist, uh -huh. that when he moved, I think he moved, a, it was a picture from one wall to another, he ended up getting more clients because there were certain, oh, um, I don't know the technicalities, but because he moved it to a certain place that was about uh, business for him, mm -hmm. it brought in more clients because it changed the energy in his apartment. Now, let me it's ask you. I mean, fascinating. I think it's, everything's fascinating. I mean, between the feng shui and the human uh -huh. talking to the animals. Are humans getting to the point of talking on a, Metaphysical is not the right word. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Not well, it's spiritual. Kind of spiritual, spiritual, mental level. Yeah, okay. like a mental telepathy. Mental. That's the word I was yeah. looking for. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I mean, we do it all the time, and again, because of the way we're raised, um, either children will have imaginary friends, which could be spirit guides, they could be angels, they could uh -huh. be animals. And parents, in, you know, in all good conscience, trying to che teach us to live in this world, say, oh, that's your imagination. Lovely. Okay. And because that's what they know. You know, and this is outside, you know, outside of their experience. So they, you know, and children have wonderful imaginations. And something that I had read, actually in Reader's Digest, a couple of years ago, Something that Joan of Arc said is that one of the ways she communicates with God is through her imagination. So it's a form of communication. Imagination is communication. Oh, it's a communication with the God within and the God without. And with the goddess within and the goddess without. Okay, so taking all this into consideration, how can a woman apply it to her everyday life to advance herself, promote herself, um, of course, we're better people, mm -hmm. than <laughs> but the thing is, how do one pull the whole package together to enhance their lives? The first thing I would say is, one of the first things I said to you is pay attention, first of all, to how we speak about ourselves, mm -hmm. because we have all these tapes that we've been taught growing up, um, depending on the family and the culture. Um, here, it's a little worse than... Europe, where women are treated with, with disrespect, and it's a very subtle disrespect. In like, Europe? Yeah, well, here, here it's a little worse because, it's and the men open. are raised the same way. Okay. But, but, I mean, even just use the words we use, a lot of men will call women girls. Mm -hmm. And just the way I am it doesn't offend me. I just prefer to be called a woman. I haven't been a girl in many years. So it's just paying attention to how other people talk to us and saying, excuse me, please don't do that in whatever manner and it takes practice you know because most of us are trained not to talk back both men and women um, and it just takes practice even practice in the mirror and pay attention to ourselves when something when an, uh, an incident happens whether it's something that we term as good or bad just check in with yourself and see how it feels, whether you need to say something. Sometimes it, saying something is not necessary. And that's how I do. And it, again, it takes practice because we Keep your mouth shut. And but then it takes think practice about to pay attention to ourselves as to okay. whether it's beneficial for the relationship, whether it's with uh, another woman or another man, or a man, mm -hmm. as to whether it's beneficial to that relationship to say something or the relationship with yourself. Most of the time it is, sometimes it's not. Because I know one time I wanted to say something to somebody and I said, no, that would be disrespect to my grandmother. It had nothing to do with me saying that That's to the great. person. That's so great. I de elected not to, but I mm -hmm. was dooming for like two days. Yeah. Well, sometimes in, in, in an instance like that, 
you would rather keep the respect for your grandmother than say something. I think that's great. great. And that's, that's about the balance, is going, well, do I need to say something here? And saying it in a manner, even if it's somebody that maybe you don't particularly like or that you've had some problems with or some friction, mm -hmm. you're still in a relationship with this person, whether it's personal or business, say, well, what will be most beneficial for this relationship? Because whatever we put out We're gonna is read. a copy. Yeah, well, what, what we keep the original, whatever we put out, whether it's love, anger, hate, happiness, joy, we keep the original. We send out a copy. Uh -huh, so it's I like making a photocopy. Me. You know, you keep the original, and I give you a copy of what I'm, of what I'm feeling. So that's something to think about, too. And, and the other person is like, is this beneficial for this relationship? That's interesting. In 30 seconds, yes. what advice would you give to, to the w people in our audience? Again, the main thing is pay attention and see how you respond in different situations and whether it's working for you, whether, it, whether it's beneficial to your well-being and the well-being of the people around you. But mostly, especially as women, we're taught to, oh, do for you, yes, what can I do for you, which is wonderful, and you need to do for yourself first, then you have more to give. Ah, fascinating, fascinating. Roseanne, thank you so much for joining me today. It's been it's wonderful. I've learned so much about the human experience, feng shui, however you pronounce it, and gaining power in listening to the words we speak. Yes. And I hope you've learned too. Thank you again for joining us, and I'd love to hear from you. So please write or email me. Look forward to hearing from you. Bye now.